Welcome to the WHBC Sunday Talks podcast. Sunday Talks is a weekly roundtable discussion about theological and cultural topics. For more information, please visit our website at whbcconway.org. Here's your host, Dr. Larry White. Hey, welcome to Sunday Talks. We are in a series this fall we're calling Viewpoints, and I've been talking with uh, different ministers from our church, primarily from our church. We've had one uh, guest outside and may have another one before we end up this series. But always glad to have our ministers come in and talk with you. I uh, wanted to get to know them. Get to, in fact, Greg and I were talking earlier, we've learned some things about, <laughs> about right. our fellow ministry staff we didn't know in, in, in watching these and being a part of this. But just talking about different things and, and our different views of things, and not necessarily that we have contrasting views, but it's always good to hear from somebody else how they view things. And, and there's an interesting thing we're going to talk about today that, that Greg's, I don't, know if you, I don't know if you coined the term, but, but at least I hadn't heard it before until I heard it from you. But we always want to, I always want to start with, particularly in, in, in these, this series, in hearing your salvation testimony. Because those are, to me, everybody who's a Christian has that story to tell. Yeah, sure, absolutely. Uh, and, it's, and it's always unique and different. In fact, uh, uh, yours tonight will be uh, radically different from Bob Lever's coming up, mm-hmm. at, you know, and just at the stage of life that you came to faith in Christ. But tell us briefly how you came. And by the way, sure. Greg Childress is our worship pastor, so sure. didn't, didn't say that. So tell us how yeah. you came to Christ. Glad to be here. It's October. Happy Pastor Appreciation yeah, Month to yeah. you. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate you and Ms. Carla and all that you do. I'm always glad to share my story. Mm-hmm. Um, I had the privilege of growing up in a strong Christian yeah, home. You yeah. know, I, I've always said it's somewhat like a the Christian leave it to beaver home. Yeah, yeah. You know, I hate to say anything's perfect, but it was near perfect. And even my whole extended family, always in church, first ones to church, last yeah. ones to leave. My dad was a song leader for 33 years. They taught Sunday school. They opened and closed the building, the deacons, you know, just everything. But yeah. even as a young child, I knew... That just because I was always in church, starting learning, memorizing Bible scripture when I was a preschooler and all of that, that didn't make me a Christian. Right. Any more than, I don't know, going to Walmart makes me a Walmart associate or going to McDonald's yeah. makes me a hamburger. Yeah. I mean, really, I knew um, of God's call on my life, and I knew that I had to confess my sins right. and acknowledge that I was in need of a Savior. I was a very shy kid, mm. and so just, you know doing that and making that public or really just desiring someone to lead me through that and my parents very patient Mm -hmm. to wait for god's spirit to draw me Mm -hmm. and one night i was at child evangelism fellowship camp in chickasaw state park in tennessee Mm -hmm. tuesday night 1977 and a faithful uh camp counselor you know Mm -hmm. asked us boys before we went to bed who has not ever prayed to receive christ and given your life to christ and I knew that I had to raise my hand. So after all the boys went to bed, he gently took me outside and led me in what I already knew that I needed to do. Mm-hmm. And I will never forget that night for the first time, praying, mm-hmm. confessing my sins, asking Christ into wow. my life. I can still re- remember all the images, mm-hmm. the sense of peace that overwhelmed me, the joy. Yeah, yeah. And uh, hey, listen, I've had a lot of failures since then, and not perfect by any means. But I'll never forget the night that Christ came into my life yeah. and I gave my life yeah. to Him. Yeah, That's the, I, yeah. again, I, I love to hear everybody's story because it just takes me back to my yeah. own experience, and and uh, everybody needs to have that experience. Sure, yeah, absolutely. And, and uh, it's taking you on a long journey of serving Him, being faithful to Him. And so back, uh, we did staff evaluations back earlier, maybe it was last month. By this time, uh, when we showed this. Um, and one of the things you talked about was worship discipleship. And then recently uh, we had a roundtable meeting of, of worship ministers from, I guess it's all over the state, but at least yeah, sure. central Arkansas, quite a few guys in there. I was kind of scared to be in the room, honestly, all these music <laughs> ministers, and I was afraid I was going to have to sing. But I just stepped in for a moment, and I know you shared a paper that you'd done. In fact, you got it there mm-hmm. with you, that uh, about just what this term worship discipleship mm-hmm. means. And so just wanted you to explain that a little bit, and maybe I'll have some follow-up yeah. questions with that. Well, I certainly didn't coin the term, obviously, but it's something that uh, I think has become a real point of context with what we're doing in ministry and in mm-hmm. worship and in leading our people. Yeah. You know, worship is not just about learning to play an instrument or singing a song. We want to be discipling our people yeah. using the medium of worship. And when we talk about worship discipleship, I guess you have to define those two words. Yeah, There's a lot of definitions for worship, but for me it's kind of like 
you know, the highest affections or the deepest praise that you give to God. Mm -hmm. You know, it's loving the Lord with all your heart, soul, mind, and spirit. And discipleship yeah. is how you teach people as we're going through the book of Mark, to be followers mm -hmm. and fishers of men mm -hmm. and followers of Jesus Christ, you know, uh, denying ourselves, taking up our cross and following Him daily. And, you know, just some notes that we shared is the way we, or the way I think about discipleship, kind of from a fourfold uh, step, is about teaching the Word of God. Again, mm -hmm. it's not just about music. We, you know, we want to train people and mm -hmm. disciple them and teach them the Word of God. We also want to bring them in to the people of God yeah. as they build relationships and friendships and do ministry together. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody has gifts. Yeah. You know, we're all a part of the body of the Christ. Everybody has something that the Spirit's given them to serve and to share. Yeah. And in discipleship, when we're coming together, I think that's when people are most built up to serve together. They right. love community community together. Mm -hmm. But even that's not enough. We have to do it. And again, go back to even last Sunday's message about prayer mm -hmm. and being empowered by the Spirit of God. Yeah. You know, discipling people not to just trust in their gifts or their talents, but right. we need the Spirit's empowerment. Yeah. To yeah. do the work of God. Yeah. And then, and that's the fourth thing, the mission yeah. of God. Mm -hmm. That as it comes full circle, that as we're discipled in the word and in growing together, and through the power of the Spirit, then we're on mission with God. Right. That then we disciple. Yeah. And yeah. we're seeing it in our church. Yeah. You know, yeah. we're seeing even students that have come and grown. Now they're training mm -hmm. younger students yeah. in the same way. So yeah. thinking about all that and then just some scripture verses that are kind of key, Ephesians 4.11. 4, yeah. You know, I believe that our, our role God. in the church is to equip you to do the work of the ministry. Mm -hmm. uh, our church has different gifts than I have or you have, but using mm -hmm. those gifts to build up the body of Christ yeah. and also teaching them to make a sacrifice. You know, what yeah. is it costing you? Right. We give a lot of time to a lot of things in life, mm -hmm. and there's nothing wrong with that. But to the Lord, what are we offering to Him in sacrifice? What does it cost us? Mm -hmm. You know, what does it mean? You know, worship we can think of as on Sundays. But from Monday through Saturday, right. you, I mean, you're worshiping. But what did it cost you? Mm -hmm. What did you have to give up? What did you sacrifice to the Lord? So, you know, as David said at the end of 2 Samuel, I don't want to offer to the Lord anything that cost me nothing. Right. And so, and then teaching them to worship. The woman at the well passage mm -hmm. in John 4, teaching to worship in word and spirit. Mm -hmm. um, I just had a real burden here in the last several months about when we come together in corporate worship, we're asking our people to respond to something, to, mm -hmm. to worship or to be engaged about whatever we are presenting before them. So yeah. what is that? Is it yeah. a cool light show? Is it great music? Mm -hmm. Is it the singers hitting all the right notes? Is it uh, the right videos? No, we want to say through the revealed Word of God, here mm -hmm. is Jesus Christ. Yeah. And everything that we do, we... We lift up Christ, yeah. respond to Christ through the spoken word, the sung word, the written word, mm -hmm. uh, the proclaimed word, instead of so many other things that could actually yeah. be distractions. Yeah. That, uh, but we have to teach our people. I was just actually discipling one of our young worship leaders, mm -hmm. Jackson Black. Mm -hmm. We meet every week. He's our student ministry worship leader on Wednesday nights. We don't talk a whole lot about music. We talk about the Word. Mm -hmm. We talk about the whys. Mm -hmm. Why did you choose this song? What's the purpose? Yeah. How does it relate to Hayden's message? What? Yeah. Why are we singing this, or what are we hoping to teach the people? And then encouraging him, well, you train your leaders first, mm -hmm. beyond just music, yeah. but train them in the spiritual things of worship so that then they can again, lead the people in that. So there's a lot yeah. involved in that. You know How we do it Christ-centered, gospel-centered uh, word mm -hmm. and messages and all that we do. And again, everything Christ-centered, mm -hmm. um, everything that is spirit-empowered. And then we just give as many opportunities as we can to people of all ages. Yeah, yeah. You know, you hear the word multi-generation a lot, but I love that about our mm -hmm. church mm -hmm. because our people are involved from every age. Yeah. When you look upon our platform on Sunday mornings, you'll see as young as seventh graders all the way up right. into people in their 80s, mm -hmm. and they all have different levels of gifting. Mm -hmm. And we're, we're constantly in a, in a, I think it's scriptural, in a, in a state of training people mm -hmm. in discipleship of yeah. worship. Just yeah. like in the Old Testament when they were 
preparing or building the tabernacle and building up teams to lead, it said that they cast lots for their yeah. service yeah. in First Chronicles 25, both small and great, yeah. teacher and pupil alike. So we hear people all the time say, oh, well, I can't sing or I don't have, mm -hmm. I'm not that good. Perfect. That's what we need. We need mm. both teacher and pupil. We need both small and great. Yeah. People have different levels of giftedness or abilities. Yeah. Yeah. However, we want to train people to be skillful. Mm -hmm. I believe in that same context, it says that, and all those that serve were skillful, even numbered them, 288 yeah. people. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the psalmist said in Psalm 33, uh, play skillfully to mm -hmm. the Lord. We need to give God our best. Right. So we have to constantly be in a, tra yeah. in a spirit of training and developing. Yeah. And I love to see it from what we're doing through our youngest of children all mm -hmm. the way through our greatest. Mm -hmm. And again, giving them opportunities. Our students lead once a month. Our college ministry is going to lead the end of this month. Uh, we're incorporating all the ages every week. You know, we send them to camps. We have to invest in them. Mm -hmm. We have to spend money. Yeah. Yeah. We have to use resources. Yeah. And I'm so grateful to serve at a church and under your leadership that our church will do that yeah. and will make that sacrifice. And it's just, you know, my my passion and excitement is to see mm -hmm. people developing yeah. and using their gifts for the Lord. Well, and it's it's it is a very exciting ministry. I mean, it's you know, um, I know it's a lot of hard mm -hmm. work in what goes into to uh, what happens on Sunday. I said a few weeks ago, you know, hey, y'all didn't just come up here and decide to sing yeah. this today. And what I, one thing I appreciate about you, Greg, is your patience and coaching and teaching people that, like myself, that, you know, have very limited understanding of music. There are people that, there are actually people in the choir, no less than I do, <laughs> and, and that can sing, can't yeah. sing any better than I can. But that you, though you could deal with university level, you know, graduate trained uh, musicians mm -hmm. and, and lead them fine, you can also work with a seventh grader or a senior adult who, can only read the words on the page, has no idea what all those notes and things mean, but just wants to sing. Yeah. And I love when someone comes to you and says, hey, do you think there's any chance I could sing in the choir? And you say, absolutely. There's no, there's no, there's no auditioning. There's no, you know, I mean, certainly if you want to sing a solo, there's probably going to be a little bit more expected there, but that, that it's, it's, it's a, it is discipleship. It is. And I'm seeing people get involved in that ministry who were doing really weren't doing anything else yeah, in the church. That's true. And now they're now they're part of something. And everybody wants, like you said, everybody wants to be part of something. And one thing that I do enjoy and I appreciated recently, I've noticed, in fact, I was counting the other day, uh, always counting so many people up there, but the number of men, yeah. I watch I watch a lot of worship services and, you know, it is, most don't have choir anymore. The ones that do, I see a women's choir. Nothing wrong with the women's choir. They, they, they probably sing a lot better than us men do. But I love to see men. I hear 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 the bass line. Hear hear the tenors up there singing, and you know, recently we've had a number of guys coming in and joining. Of course, there's a lot of young men. There's a lot of teenagers that are part of that group. Um, why is that? And mm. and 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 how do you how do you keep men? You know, because some people say, well, that's just not something for me. How do you keep mm. men engaged in in, yeah. in recruiting others? I feed them. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that is a, I saw a hunter over here behind the camera eating uh, over there last night. So. No, it's, uh, you know, it was interesting to think about that. And I think a couple of things. I think, and praise God for the women in our church that yeah. serve and that are faithful and that sacrifice and that sing and play instruments. But men, I think we're called to be leaders. Yeah. I think that's just who how God has made us to lead and to set an example and men do love to lead. And when they find that they have that ability, mm -hmm. and again, it's not based on talent. Yeah. It's based on availability and saying like Isaiah, here am I, Lord, send me. Yeah. It's like Samuel, here am I. It's like the Apostle Paul, okay, Lord, I'll go. I'll mm -hmm. it's, it's God just wants a willingness. And I think, you know, when they perhaps see something of passion or enthusiasm mm -hmm. or excitement, and then they try it and they get in there and they see well, this is a whole lot more than just singing. Yeah. It's yeah. a whole lot more than just music. It's back to that worship discipleship. Yeah. And then I think of these men, and I think it also starts with the young boys. Yeah. When when we see the young boys, and perhaps that inspires the men as well that come in there to sing, and that's why we like to pair them together a lot. Mm -hmm. But I'm telling you, when they begin to lead and worship and they see mm -hmm. our congregation engaged, Yeah. And they see God moving in the hearts of the people. And I think when they see, hey, I can be a part of that, 
and the men make our our, our choir. I mean, yeah. uh, again, they're not better or anything than the ladies, yeah. but yeah. when men lead, when godly men lead, mm-hmm. I think that transforms a church body. Yeah. We need more of that. But I also think it's community. You know, mm-hmm. by nature, we men, we don't typically have as many friends mm-hmm. as ladies do, and they can come in on a weekly basis and join together. Yeah, we have great food and great music and all of that, but we enjoy being together and building relationships. Hey, I mean, our Sunday school class, our guys yeah, are having breakfast yeah, in the morning, yeah, you know? Yeah. We love that, yeah. and I think that's important. And so a couple of things just like that. And uh, listen, who we're looking for, we're not looking for talented yeah, people. Yeah. We remember Gary Thomas. Yeah, and I And the love weeks Gary. that we yeah. looked out there, and our choir would look out there, and every week we would see someone like Gary and other men that were just singing with their yeah. hearts out just uh, unashamedly and uh, even more undignified and, before yeah, the Lord. Yeah, and, and what a witness That's who we're that looking is, for. And, and Rock's made an observation, we shared this in staff meeting the other day, probably remember this, that as he was watching uh, one Sunday morning and watching, and he would see, and dads, I'm, I'm saying this to dads and granddads, what an example you are, that the it, well, there would be a father and their mm-hmm. sons with right. him. And if the father was singing, the boys That's were singing. Point. But if if dad wasn't singing, mm-hmm. the boys weren't singing. Mm-hmm. Men are watching you, and it's like, man, that, that you know. And I'm I am not the most expressive guy in anything, but certainly not not in worship. But people are watching. In fact, I was Hannah told me one time. She said the college students watch you, and if and if you give a sign that you're going to lift your hand or you're clapping your hands, they're watching right. that. Other people, and especially dads, like you said, dads are. Most women would agree to this. Hey, we want we want strong leaders, and men are leading, and you're leading by example, whether you're leading positively sure. or negatively. And I love the fact that men are up there, and that that I think it says to any man that walks in the church, hey, listen, that's a manly thing to be up there and do mm-hmm. that. And and there there are people are always looking for people that look like them. Well, there's there's another man up yeah. there. I had a couple of men in the choir just recently say, hey, thank you for not making it so much about the oohs and the ahs and the technical mm-hmm. stuff. We can just worship. Yeah. And even in staff meeting, I think it was two or three weeks ago, we as a staff were talking about the men in the choir, mm-hmm. their expression, their passion, their yeah. their joy. Yeah. Their, and that it makes a huge difference. Yeah. So men leading, yeah. I think, attracts other men to and do And it's, things. you know, it's like, and, and God sometimes blesses you. You don't have any, and then he just continues blessing mm-hmm. I remember when we didn't have any yeah. guitarists. Oh, sure, we didn't absolutely. have any instrument. You know, we didn't have many instrumentalists besides the pianist and organist, and and even people available to do that, and even men in the choir. And now God's blessed us with an abundance, yeah, praise and, the Lord. and we need to keep using them. Well, you and I are about the same age. You're younger than I am, but we've been <laughs> in ministry almost the same amount of time, and we've seen a lot of a lot of change oh, over yeah. the, over time. I know in in uh, music ministry, man the. <laughs> massive changes from massive. you know. In fact, I was talking to someone the other day about. Um, they were asking if Southern ba- they were not a Southern Baptist. Are all Southern Baptist churches alike? It's what we used to be. Everybody used to have mm-hmm. a Baptist hymnal. That was what you sang out of. You mm-hmm. actually ordered your bulletin yep. from 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 it wasn't called Light, Sunday School yep. Board back then. You had the same cover, you know, and and you had Sunday school at a certain time, followed by uh, a sermon and, and worship time. And then you came back Sunday evening, had the same program. There is no two churches in Conway that begin to even begin mm-hmm. to look alike. It's that's that's rapidly changed. But how is how is music ministry and worship yeah. ministry changed just in your I think uh, that's the the biggest thing I've seen, the technology and the production mm-hmm. of it. And I hate those words yeah. from a secular standpoint, but they're resources that God's yeah. given to us and we use them for his glory. But you're right, when I started in nineteen ninety in college uh, I had a hymnal, mm-hmm. and I had a pianist, and I had an organist. Yeah. And the only real decision I had to make after I chose my three hymns is, am I going to sing that third verse of the hymn? <laughs> right. I mean, that's it. That's right. And it was so much easier, but that's when the, you know, Lord, I lift your name on mm-hmm. high, yeah. and some of these others, and you started to see another instrumentation in the church. Well, now... Yeah. There's so many tools and resources of technology, oh, of, yeah. of multiple instruments and orchestras and choirs and click tracks and in-ear monitors and mm-hmm. lighting schemes mm-hmm. and uh, so many other things and online uh, web yeah. worship yeah. planning yeah. and uploading all your charts and tracks and preparing your people. And these yeah. are all great resources, yeah. but they cannot be, and hopefully we don't make it the most important thing, that right. Christ is the most important thing. But it's... I was just talking with Jackson Black, and I asked him 
in the last several weeks of you learning to be a planner, because he plans all their youth services, he recruits the team, he selects the music, he studies the scriptures. I said, what do you find to be the hardest thing? And he said, all of the work and the planning. Mm -hmm. I said, yeah, please tell my kids that I actually yeah. do work, you know, because yeah. they always yeah. say, Dad, what do you do yeah. up there all day? Yeah. Yeah. But I think that's one thing. And the second thing is unfortunately that we've become more of a spectator sport in worship. Mm -hmm. You know, when you and I, with that hymnal back in that day, yeah, people just everybody. came in. Yeah. There wasn't a lot to respond to other than truth, and we just sang the songs. Mm -hmm. But now our so many of our churches, unfortunately, are just... We come and we just watch. Mm -hmm. we, we, we come and we just want to be, I don't know if it's entertained or we want to just, there's unfamiliarity with the songs. Yeah. We don't know the worshipers. We don't have a relationship. Everything's new every week. It's wow, look at the lights. Look at this technology. How gifted mm -hmm. is that singer? And unfortunately, and none of those things are wrong in and of themselves. Right. Yeah. But we, we don't, I don't think the church has the same compassion that we're all joining together mm -hmm. to encounter the presence of God and to worship. Not, we're yeah. not just watching what they're doing. And I think that that's a real struggle for the yeah. church now. And, and that's, and that, but that's a culture that, that mm -hmm. created that way. Yeah. And you've helped to create it in our church where it's not that way. In fact, Good. you know, I go out to other places and I preach in different places with, with the convention and I have been, I'm not doing it anymore, mm -hmm. but, uh, <laughs> my time has ended, but, uh, Man, and I come back and I'm like, wow, everybody needs to go see something someplace else and sing. And I'll sing, and I'm sometimes I find I'm the only one singing. What we have so many voices singing in our church. We do. And it's a good thing. I can't hear yeah. myself. It's not that it's loud, it's just that everybody's participating. Not everybody, but most everybody's a much greater percentage are participating. And that's something you gotta develop and you gotta encourage. Mm -hmm. And we do encourage it. Is it is and it is a major production. That that's that's no it doesn't be apologized yeah. about that. But um, it is it takes all that and one, there are a lot of folks that watch that online and that's their that's their gateway into the church. That's how they participate. And we do want to do that very well, but it, I think we have found a good balance there of putting a lot of time and energy on that, but also realizing while we're yeah. there and, uh, um, I'm at, I'm at a good place with all the change. I didn't, I didn't embrace everything <laughs> in the beginning. I did. I went kicking and screaming when we gave up the hymnal, but, uh, um, but I'm so grateful for worship that takes place yeah. and, and, and we still have all those old tools. And I, one thing you've been doing, I'll just mention this kind of in closing, I've loved and our people have loved this, these medleys we've been doing mm -hmm. recently where we're singing a brand new song and then I don't know, I, I've not looked ahead so I don't know what's coming next. It's like, wait a minute, that's an old one yeah, sure. that, that we haven't sung in years and it just, it flows together and I see everybody embracing that and, and it's just, it's, and I know it's, that takes a lot of work, it's, you know, it takes money to to purchase those <laughs> those those pieces as well. But uh, um, love you, brother Greg, and I appreciate yeah, what you. you do. And and uh, you know, if you're if you're in, interested in worship ministry or the technology side of that, I mean, I don't know how many tech people are involved on a Sunday morning, but there's quite a few. Quite Always a few, can use more. Few, yeah. And uh, but it's it certainly helps. Man, as a preacher, sometimes I I feel guilty. Like, well, man, I. I should just let them keep on going because <laughs> it's so powerful, but it prepares me to bring the word mm. and it all fits together. It's all, it's all a great, great thing we'll get to be a part of together. Amen. Well, thank you all for being part of Sunday Talks. Thank you, Greg, for joining us. And uh, if you enjoy this, again, share this with others. we got another week or so we're going to be doing this series. And if you missed some of those, go back and watch them. I think you would enjoy each one of these we've done. Again, thank you for being a part of this. Mm -hmm.